Happy Monday, everybody. My name is Brandon Rosa, and welcome to episode 179 of the Xbox in 10 podcast, your weekly source of Xbox gaming news covered in around 10 minutes. Every Monday, this podcast covers new game releases, the previous week's gaming news, and we all are in an Xbox-related fun fact together. This show is on YouTube and podcast services around the world, so please subscribe in your favor and leave a review. Xboxin10.com, no numbers, is your quick source for links to all of our podcast destinations and social media profiles, which you can follow at Xboxin10. To start, let's talk game releases. The big games out last week were Resident Evil Village Gold Edition, Resident Evil Reverse, Resident Evil Village Winter's Expansion, and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. The games coming out this week include Broken Pieces, Lonesome Village, The Legend of Tie Ending, LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga Galactic Edition, Missile Command Recharged, The Entropy Center, Ali Ali World Finding the Flow Zone, Hat Up, Shatter Remastered Deluxe, Die by the Blade, WRC Generations, Sword and Fairy Together Forever, Ghost Song, Yuppie Psycho Executive Edition, Bratz Flaunt Your Fashion, Silver Nornir, and Counter Attack. New games with gold for the month of November 2022 have been announced, and they include the following. From Xbox One, available November 1st to the 30th is Praetorian's HD Remaster, and November 16th to December 15th is Dead End Job. As we start to see only two games a month, and we look at what these games are, it makes you really wonder why this is still a thing. Now into last week's biggest news stories, and we have six to cover this week. Number one, Phil Spencer admits Xbox won't be able to avoid price hikes forever. Matt Wales at Eurogamer writes, Microsoft's head of gaming, Phil Spencer, has discussed possible price increases across the Xbox line, acknowledging that while the company has so far maintained prices for its consoles, Game Pass, and games, it will, quote, at some point have to raise the price on certain things, end quote. Speaking at the Wall Street Journal's Tech Live, thanks to The Verge, Spencer admitted, quote, We've held price on our console, we've held price on our games, and our subscription, but I don't think we'll be able to do that forever. I do think at some point we'll have to raise some prices on certain things, but going into the holiday, we thought it was important to maintain the prices, end quote. Earlier this year, of course, Sony announced that it would be increasing the cost of the PlayStation 5 in response to, quote, high global inflation rates as well as adverse currency trends, end quote. At the time, Spencer said Xbox would not be following suit, explaining, quote, when our customers are more economically challenged and uncertain than ever, we don't think it's the right move, end quote. Given Spencer's latest comments, though, it's unclear how long that might last. Elsewhere in his Tech Live chat, Spencer revealed some interesting tidbits about Xbox's various services, including the news that Game Pass is now profitable, despite growth beginning to slow on consoles. A situation Spencer says, quote, is mainly because at some point you've reached everybody on console that wants to subscribe, end quote. While new console subscriptions may be slowing, Game Pass on PC is said to be, quote, seeing incredible growth, end quote. And Game Pass as a whole now accounts for around 15% of Microsoft's overall Xbox content and services revenue, a figure Spencer believes is likely to hold. Quote, I don't think it'll get bigger than that, end quote, he explained. Quote, I think overall revenue grows, so 15% of a bigger number, but we don't have this future where I think 50 to 70% of our revenue comes from subscriptions, end quote. Sensor comments come a day after Microsoft revealed its Xbox hardware revenue has grown by 13%, making for the gaming division's best ever Q1 results. A 30% fall in Xbox content and services revenue was said to have been, quote, partially offset, end quote, but growth in Game Pass with, quote, more than 20 million people, end quote, now having used the service to stream games. I think we all are aware that this is inevitable in the crazy inflation world that we live in. Games are more expensive to make than ever. So you have to wonder which game is going to be the first to break the camel's back. Seems obvious in 2023 we're going to get Xbox price hikes up to the $70. Is it going to be Starfield, which might be a little bit later in the year? Or something earlier like Forza Motorsport or Redfall? Time will tell, but you better believe that if not by the end of next year, 2024, your Game Pass subscription definitely going up because it is the best value in gaming. Number 2. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 won't let PC and Xbox players disable crossplay. George Yang at IGN writes, those playing the latest Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 on Xbox and PC have realized they can't disable crossplay with other platforms. However, PlayStation players do have this option. PC lacks the function entirely, while the only way for Xbox players to disable crossplay right now is to do so on the console itself. While this guarantees that you'll only be playing with other Xbox players, it will apply to all games, not just Modern Warfare 2. PlayStation 4 and 5 players are simply able to toggle whether they'd like to crossplay with other platforms or not. Unfortunately, Xbox and PC players are stuck with each other until Activision Blizzard puts out an update to enable this function for them. Whether the developer chooses to is another matter, as this isn't a totally new issue. Even Call of Duty Warzone functions similarly on Xbox. 
While the crossplay toggle is there for the platform, the game pops up a notice requiring the player to enable crossplay as soon as they queue up for a playlist, effectively rendering the toggle useless. On PlayStation, players can just bypass the notice and queue up for a match. I wanted to put this blurb out there in case you're playing the new Modern Warfare 2 and you're trying to understand if you're on console, why you feel like everyone might be so much better than you. Or maybe that's just the excuse I use when I play on console and crossplay with my PC friends. Number three. Age of Empires Xbox console debut confirmed for 2023. Sean Carey at True Achievements writes, It's official, Age of Empires is coming to console in 2023, with Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition set to arrive on Xbox Series X and S on January 31st, and Age of Empires 4 to follow later in the year. According to a new Xbox Wire post, quote, The team has been working hard to bring in an experience that not only feels great using a controller, but also teaches players to play on Xbox, end quote. Although it goes on to reassure players that mouse and keyboard support will also be included, and that crossplay between platforms will be optional, Xbox Cloud Gaming will also be supported via Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. This is a huge franchise, one that I've never played, but it seems like the community is very happy to see their attempt on console, which it's also very nice to see them providing that keyboard and mouse support if you want to play that way on your Xbox. Number 4, Fallout 4 is getting an Xbox Series X and S and PS5 upgrade next year. Ryan Dinsdale at IGN writes, Bethesda has announced that Fallout 4 is coming to PS5 and Series X and S with an official next generation update next year. As part of the Fallout 25th anniversary celebration, Bethesda released a blog post that announced the long-awaited free update that is also coming to PC. Arriving eight years after Fallout 4 was first released, the update includes a performance mode that allows for higher frame rates, a quality mode for 4K graphics, plus bug fixes, and more Creation Club content. The developer didn't reveal a specific release date or window for Fallout 4's next-gen update, nor did it give a full list of features, but it will also likely include console-specific upgrades such as the use of the PlayStation 5's haptic feedback. It may be the only new Fallout update for a while, at least officially, as Fallout 5 is likely years away as Bethesda won't release it until after The Elder Scrolls 6, which in turn is coming after 2023's Starfield. Indeed, we need to hold on to this as this might be the next greatest Fallout content we get at that because for some reason we can't get a remake and or a proper remaster of Fallout 3 on modern consoles. Will that ever make sense to me? No. Hopefully we're wrong in the next two to three years? Yes. But this is exciting. I actually never finished Fallout 4. I had an incredible experience with it where in like the first 28 hours or so I put in like 18. I went completely nuts, then put the game down, never beat it. So maybe this is my excuse to get back in. Number five, Wong Fallen Dynasty is coming in March with a deluxe edition. Christina Alexander at Digital Trends writes, Team Ninja's upcoming Souls-like title, Wong Final Dynasty, will be released worldwide on March 3rd, 2023, Koei Tecmo America announced on Wednesday. The publisher notes that Wong Fallen Dynasty Digital Deluxe Edition will be released on the same day. The special edition of the game will come out with a season pass that features three DLC packs, which will have new generals, demons, scenarios, stages, and weapon types, among other forms of content. Anyone who purchased the Digital Deluxe Edition will be rewarded with the Qlong Armor, which is a season pass bonus item, along with the digital art book and mini soundtrack. In addition to the King Long Armor, players will be rewarded with a couple more armor pieces if they pre-order Wolong Fallen Dynasty. Players that pre-order the physical or digital copy of the game by March 16th, 2023, will receive the Baihu armor. Those who only pre-order the digital version will get the Zuki armor, in addition to the Bahu armor. On the physical front, the game will also be released with a steelbook version that comes with a bonus DLC item, including Crown of the Zorong and Crown of the Gonggong. After you listen to me butcher the names of all of those pieces, this is a big piece of news, as this is one of our big 2023 Xbox Game Pass gets. Considering how big the Souls-like genre is, this is huge for Xbox to secure one that will be coming day and date to Xbox Game Pass on console and PC, so I'm happy for those with fans of this genre. However, I am not one. And number six, Somerville, a new game from the X Inside co-creator arrives in November. George Yang at IGN writes, Somerville, the new game from Lindo and Inside co-creator Dino Patty's new studio will be released on November 15th for PC, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and S. It will also be included on Xbox Game Pass upon release. The studio revealed the launch date in a new but rather low-key trailer. Somerville is a third-person action-adventure game following a family of four on a post-apocalyptic Earth. The father, mother, son, and dog must navigate around obstacles like ancient civilization ruins and mysterious aliens. Players must also work with other human survivors in order to keep the family safe. Somerville was first revealed in 2017 with a teaser trailer followed by an announcement trailer at E3 2021. Now it's finally released in a short few weeks. 
This is awesome because we really have been waiting for this game since 2017, which is crazy. Five years later, I remember when we first saw the trailer, everyone was all hyped. I was excited. It looks great as someone who really enjoyed Limbo and Inside. I can't wait that this game is so short away. As always, we end our show with a fun fact about Xbox, and given the Fallout news this week, let's do a little Fallout fun fact. Did you know that Fallout New Vegas was originally going to be a big expansion for Fallout 3? Credit to Logan Plant and IGN for this one. Fallout New Vegas definitely stands on its own as a full game, but it was originally conceptualized as a huge expansion for Fallout 3. In a Fallout retrospective video posted by Bethesda, Bethesda executive producer and Fallout 3 director Todd Howard explained how New Vegas came to be. Fallout 3 comes out and it's really a really big hit for the company. And they're like, okay, so what's the follow-up? And I was like, well, we're doing Skyrim, so then it'll be Fallout 4. And there was a push like, we should do a big expansion pack or something like that. Are there other companies that we could have do it? And we knew the folks at Obsidian, and there was sort of this immediate thought that there's only one group we really would want to do this. And it actually started as a big expansion pack for Fallout 3, and I felt really strongly that it should be its own game. Fallout fans are definitely glad this project turned into a full game, as Fallout New Vegas is one of the greatest open world games of all time. As we gotta put the big thanks out there to Bethesda's father, Todd Howard, as this could have been an expansion? Crazy to see how different this game would have been perceived. Although, it does seem like there's a bit of revisionist history on this game, as I don't think many people liked it when it first came out as much as we all say we do now. Personally, I'm a Fallout 3 guy, love that game, my first big open world RPG in the western genre. I love it, I want it back in new and improved ways, please give me that Bethesda and Xbox. Thank you all for listening to the Xbox in 10 podcast, your weekly source of Xbox gaming news covering in around 10 minutes. If you like the show, please subscribe to your favorite podcast service, share it with your friends, leave a review, and follow on all social media at Xbox in 10. This past week, I started my Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 campaign, and I gotta say, I loved 2019's reboot. I kept saying how excited I was on the show about the campaign, and I think I'm about halfway through, and I'm just a little disappointed. It looks great, sounds great, feels great, but it almost is a little too Fast and Furious for me, and I love Fast and Furious. It's almost becoming like a superhero game at this point, which I know past Call of Duties were, but that's just my two cents. Continuing to love Overwatch 2, really enjoying that, warming up my mouse and keyboard skills ahead of Warzone 2 with that, and then I have a new addiction. As of last night, I simply cannot put down my phone and stop playing Marvel Snap. It's a crazy addictive card game, I would say play it, but buyer beware as you might become hopelessly addicted like I feel I now am. My name is Brandon Rosa, you can follow me on Xbox at Brosa93. Hope you all have a great week, stay safe, and keep on gaming.